I'm Maura Gamble from our Permaculture Life. I'm here today at Northeast Street City Farm. Back in 1994, I was involved with a group of people here to get this project started, a community farm, a permaculture garden in the middle of the city. It's now many acres of land that are dedicated to permaculture growing, food forest, woodlots, kitchen gardens, market gardens, organic cafes, organic farmers market, uh, a permaculture nursery, uh, education for children, uh, an Earth Kids program, and adult education programs, which is actually what I've been doing here this weekend, um, running an introduction to permaculture workshop. I'm going to come back down another time and do a really great movie about all the things that are happening at City Farm. But today, just before the sun goes down, at the end of this uh, hot weekend of, of permaculturing, I thought I'd just take you on a bit of a wander and show you some of the interesting plants that are growing here, right in the middle of the city in this community garden, a city farm that has no fences, it's open for people to come and walk through at any time. Um, so I'll just take you on a bit of a journey and we'll see what we can find. This turmeric behind me just grown absolutely enormously in the wicking beds here. A lot of the kitchen garden beds here at Northern Street City Farm are made using wicking beds. Behind me here is cassava. So it has an edible root. You can also eat the leaves of this if you cook them up. But you definitely do need to cook them because it's a little bit of a cyanide content in these. But as soon as it's cooked up, it's absolutely fine. So the, the leaves and the roots of cassava, which is a really popular plant in many parts of the world, but not commonly eaten in, in Western countries. This is Monstera deliciosa, or fruit salad plant. A really common garden plant but um, I don't think many people realize that this is actually edible this fruit when it ripens up it tastes like a mixture of different flavors which is why henceforth it's called fruit salad plant it's a lovely great pecan we've got some guavas papaya curry leaf tree some elderberry, there's mangoes up the back, so it's a, a veritable food forest this place. Uh, here we have some Malabar chestnut um, and underneath these two domes are some beautiful cob ovens to cook up some pizzas and here's some experimentation of turning pallets into furniture. All the posts around the main buildings have all been decorated with earth art this is the organic cafe, chai cafe, during the market days. I'm climbing up the side of the nursery building here is Salon Spinach. You can see it just climbing its way up. Behind me here though is a great big clump of it. And look at the size of these leaves here. So a couple of these would do a great big spanakopita or a stir fry and the, the seeds are inside these little ones here. Watch this. Look at that colour. Isn't that beautiful? You can actually make a beautiful art wash to do you know, some painting with that. Kids will love it. And inside, look there's the seed. So if you plant the seed we we'll get another plant happening again. So that's all growing over this deciduous fig at the moment. And right here is a little pigeon pea. So pigeon pea is a fabulous legume plant that um, grows to three or four meters and, and lasts about three or four years. And the leaves are fabulous as a mulch and chop and drop material. It also has, has edible seeds on it, which can get used um, as a dal, as a dry, um, some people also like to really eat it green, the, the seed, but my preferred way is, is um, as a dry bean and collect it when it's all dry on the tree and uh, cook it up like a dal. It's absolutely beautiful. It's been used for thousands of years in India. Uh, it's a very popular and common plant over there. This is Canna edulis. It's uh, the only edible sort of canna, or otherwise known as Queensland arrowroot. I grow it a lot for, for mulch, but also for in-garden shading and windbreaks. And also because at the banks it has edible roots that you can use instead of potatoes. 
and you don't actually need to take up the whole plant you can just snap off the little bits that are growing on the edge and um, cook it up like you would a potato you can bake it boil it mash it put it into soups it helps to really thicken up soups or chop it up and add it to a curry so um, queensland arrowroot or edible canna a fantastic permaculture plant if you see these flowers on the top of cannas it means it's not canna edulis it's actually canna indica and inside of these are seeds that are forming when they dry they turn into dark seeds almost as strong as um, shot pellets which is why it's called Indian shot is its other name um, so I wonder if we can open this up and have a look oh there they are so there inside the dried seed pod are these incredibly black hard seeds that could possibly survive through just about anything and uh, so if you've got this one it is a canna and you can use it as a mulch material or an in-garden in windbreak but it's not what you would use as an edible plant um, the base of the of the this one is not swollen and edible like the canna edulis this is vetiver a fantastic plant for helping to keep soil together. So if you're on a eroded slope or doing upland farming, vetiver is incredibly important. It's also a really useful plant to make essential oils out of. A lot of perfumes have vetiver as the base. Pinto's peanut is a fabulous little plant to help create a, a cover crop in and around an orchard area. It creates a dense mat that keeps the soil warm and creates a microclimate. Um, that also helps to provide habitat too for lots of little things that are going to be helping you in your garden lizards and frogs and so forth and what happens is it kind of spreads out and and creates a little a mat underneath let's have a look underneath can you kind of see under there all the roots starting to form so it spreads out and it, you can see here the little the roots start to stem off as soon as it, it lands down puts down some more roots so it just keeps spreading as a mat so not necessarily something you want to have in the middle of a vegetable garden but if you're trying to create a nice leguminous mat in and around your orchard this is perfect and you can tell that it's a legume because if you have a look at the flower it's definitely a pea type of flower there's even great clumps of bamboo in the middle of the city farm here which can be used for all different sorts of things from trellises and cubby houses and and toys for the kids and even sound gardens which is absolutely fantastic how wonderful to have such places in the middle of the city where you can come and harvest and play and make and create and grow and experiment and and design and be part of designing and creating something that you know is a, becoming a real essence of what this place is about you know that there's a sustainable culture that Brisbane is embracing the sustainable culture of it of its heart and that Northy Street is part of that a really important part of it another little treat in the middle of the garden here is sugarcane so you can actually just chop a little bit and have a bit of a munch on it and get a little bit of a, a sweet treat but it also makes fabulous mulch which is probably more the reason why we've got it here because it adds such a great amount of organic matter into the soil it grows so fast and when you chop it back and do the chop and drop um, you can really help to improve the soil and that's something that you really need to do particularly in the city when you've got really quite degraded and, and, and sometimes eroded or polluted soil so organic matter as much as you can get plants like the bamboo and the sugarcane are really great helpers in that way and the canna too the edible canna all of those plants I love to grow them because they they are just such a gift in terms of their abundance of organic matter. It's great to see a, a proper recycling centre in the middle of a, a public park where you can actually process your food scraps too. So any food scraps that go in this bin are going to get composted here on site and go into back into the soil and producing food. So there are some market gardens over the other side here which produce food that comes into the farmers market and can be and be bought by local residents. We're standing on the second story of the uh, main centre of, of Northy Street and I'm up here with the birds and the macadamias. Lots of bush tucker here in this garden too.
so much food in this bag. 